Hello, it's Boyd from Air Boyd, and I know I've been away for the last, well, let's call it two months. Uh, I was doing transition training, the 737, which took the better part of two months between simulator training and flight training out on the line. Got me a little bit behind on the videos and uh, some of the things that we do over here at Air Boyd, including going to air shows and out into the real world and seeing things like this. So speaking of the 737, here's the wheel tug. So there's a quick clip here going through all the different uh, machinations that the wheel tug can do, starting with the wheel tug twirl and a bunch of other things that they've, they've named and come up with to allow the aircraft to transition within the parking space. Uh, after we go through these and the demonstration, I've got about 10 more minutes discussing it afterwards and the effects of possible savings and costs and, of course, all the issues of launching a product like this during the pandemic. The integrated system uses an electric motor on the nose and basically allows the aircraft to push back, move forwards, backwards, without uh, using the engines whatsoever, uh, allowing for the engines to be started later, sooner, for safety, uh, to do a number of things. There's no tug disconnect, which is a large part of the pushback, as you know. But, of course, there is work going on during that pushback period. You know, the engines are being started, uh, checklists are being run, things of that nature. This was a successful demonstration of the product in Memphis uh, in October 2020, which uh, just happened uh, last month. And you can see that uh, there's a bunch of other different lines painted on the ground for each of the maneuvers the wheel tug does. Uh, that was the wheel tug twirl. Next up is the wheel tug twist. While obviously not just marketing names, uh, the twist, the twirl, and everything else it does is important to the maneuvers that this aircraft is going to do and how it ties in with uh, the systems and the airports. So as it comes in here, it's going to come in, turn around, follow a line, which with their partnership with Safe Dock should be able to be followed not just through the, the line on the ground and the optional camera system, but through the Safe Dock system, which will show how far the aircraft is or on the line, left or right, and where it needs to stop. It's all done with lasers. Uh, it's pretty slick when you come into a gate where there's an offset line and the aircraft is brought to a stop uh, at an angle. It feels a little weird doing it, but it works out pretty good. And here you can see them pulling up the two gates to allow forward and rear boarding and deplaning of the aircraft. Now you do have to remember that the pilot is controlling the tiller, which is effectively the ground steering wheel, and that the uh, tug is just basically going forward and backwards and allowing the aircraft to turn within the radius by using that forward and backward motion. So we'll go through this a little bit more in depth as we go on here. But that's the quick wrap up for those that you just want to take a quick look at the wheel tug and see what's possibly coming to the future of your airport and airline. And now we'll get on with talking a little bit more in depth about it. Now the concept of using a uh, Sideboarding gates, pulling in, not using tugs is not new. This is an early uh, video of Los Angeles Airport. Uh, Los Angeles had them. You can see both jetways at the front and the back there. Uh, current airports have them like uh, Kennedy, which we'll see later on. And airports like uh, Charles de Gaulle, which was very similar to LAX in its uh, central hub style where aircraft pulled in, the jetway came out, and then it pulled back allowing just a taxi away was hugely popular in early aircraft design and airport design. And Wheel Tug hopes to improve upon that and leverage both new airports, old airports, and everything in between. The Wheel Tug started off its uh, journey back in 2005 with a test on a 767, and roughly around 2007, uh, Delta Airlines became one of the first uh, launch customers to, to sign up for the Wheel Tug. Then, of course, we went into the financial crisis. Oil spiked pretty much uh, June of uh, 2008 and then crashed again by January of 2009. And, of course, I've already jumped into talking about the oil here because a lot of the wheel tug's benefits came from that design time and the high cost of operating. Not to mention we had places like uh, JFK where if you'd ever traveled through the back in the day, Two to three hour taxis were fairly normal and uh, they've done a pretty good job of getting it better. There's still long taxis up at Kennedy and some other places in the Northeast where it's uh, busy, at least pre-COVID. Um, but they've, they've done a lot of mitigating about that by sort of sorting out individual gate slot times and making sure not too many aircraft are on the taxiways at once. 
So it took about another 10 years for the certification process to work its way through, and uh, then here we are basically a few years after that, uh, out at Memphis Airport, full test version here, sitting out on an A737, and you can see that it's uh, adorned with all kinds of stickers showing what it can and can't do. And uh, it's been going through some of the uh, process here in the background, but we'll go through it uh, piece by piece and take a look at it and uh, see how it's going to be. Uh, one of the things, uh, as I mentioned before with the, the financial crisis, is, uh, again, this product is be becoming available at a time when uh, oil is at all-time low and that uh, the cost savings here for quick turns, uh, space at an airport, is not going to be quite as important right now, but will become important again down the road. As a current 737 pilot, I, of course, had tons of questions about the uh, test work here. And I think a lot of us thought back, at least in the, the 2007 period, that this was going to be used to taxi an aircraft all the way to the runway. And there is competing technology for that, and Boeing and Airbus have also been looking into it. And it may be something we do or don't have someday, but at the moment it's just not something that's uh, envisioned because it's also putting more traffic out on the, the taxiway. And where something like this that's integrated obviously helps out with only having one piece of equipment. Now, if you've been anywhere in the Southwest system where they use both the front and rear doors for boarding and deplaning, you're familiar with the, the speed that it can have getting people on and off the aircraft, particularly if it's a jetway versus air stairs. And uh, for larger aircraft, the wide bodies, uh, two air bridges or jet bridges is fairly common at uh, most of the large airports like Kennedy, for example. Looking at uh, Kennedy, you can see some of the international size gates here already have the double jetways for boarding uh, first class or the front of the cabin and the back of the cabin, depending on how it's broken up. And uh, you can see on the ground that there's plenty of space to rotate a 737 in that space. So for a wide body gate that's already set up with two jetways, this is pretty much ideal without having any further investment. Adds a lot. Uh, and you can see the clear away space, which is sort of the, the yellow and red line boxes on the outside for this gate here is significantly larger than the 737. This is probably a 757 size gate here in Memphis. And it's not autonomous. The aircraft is moved using a control from the cockpit, uh, forward reverse, and the tiller, of course, works as it is. Wheel tug says it'd be about an hour's worth of uh, computer training or time in the wheel tug sim for the pilots to learn how to use this. For additional safety and enhanced ability to do these maneuvers that wheel tug has come up with they've partnered with safegate and their laser parking system is actually able to deal with uh, angles all over the parking area and you can see the green lines in this area here which we'll show you again a little bit later on as to watch each of these maneuvers does and the safegate is actually able to help deal with that one of the biggest issues that we have at the airport and actually it's pretty much a universal issue around the world, is with the tight gate spaces and aircraft like the 737, 767 that have winglets, including the new 737 scimitar winglets, is that there's not a lot of space from gate to gate, edge to edge. Uh, we typically use uh, wing walkers, people outside the aircraft, to make sure that we don't drive into something. Now, one of the ways Wheel Tug is hoping to mitigate this for the pilots in the flight deck is using what they call Wheel Tug Vision, which is a camera system which, as you can see in the picture here, does show the wingtips, but it's actually pretty hard to tell whether or not you're driving into something from this point of view. This point of view, from a pilot's perspective, is not a whole lot different than looking out the flight deck window, taking a look back at the wing. And sometimes it's very, very difficult to see with depth perception whether or not you're actually going to drive into something. One of the other issues with this is it is clearly an optional item, and anybody who's been in aviation long enough knows that Airlines are very reluctant to buy optional items. Now, when it comes down to the economic savings, a lot of it is really going to be variable on each specific airline's model. For example, uh, Southwest Quick Turns. Uh, in Europe, they're doing the same kind of thing over EasyJet, Ryanair. Uh, space constraints at the airport, specific gates. A lot of the older airports are designed into sort of wide body, narrow body gates. May take some configuration. Uh, typically, newer airports and airports in Europe and Asia do a really good job of putting the roadway and all the equipment behind or closer to the terminal, you know, underneath it in tunnels. So there's not a lot of stuff going on behind the aircraft, around the aircraft. A lot of the older U.S. model airports 
most of the roadways for driving around uh, catering trucks, things like that, are often behind the aircraft uh, just because they didn't have a lot of space when they built the original airports, didn't quite envision the future, and that adds to a lot of complexity per airport, and it, it just varies a lot. So it's, it's tough to see where the costs are going to come in for the entire industry across the board, and then that's before we even throw in COVID. As an example here, this is a picture of uh, Delta Airlines doing their COVID uh, fumigation between flights. As of their last press release, they said this took about 20 minutes for a narrow body aircraft. So it's getting everybody off the aircraft, fogging the aircraft, then starting the boarding process again. So it's started a lot of downtime or dwell time between flights. What no one really knows is, as we go forward in the future, whether or not this enhanced cleaning or some enhanced cleaning will continue uh, I, I imagine that most of the airlines will continue to do some enhanced cleaning because we've all gotten kind of used to having a clean aircraft. That's not to say they weren't clean before, but, you know, there's a lot more time put into it. Southwest and other low-cost carriers, of course, are famous for having their flight attendants help clean the cabins between flights to cut down on that time and making the aircraft turn quickly, which is really what Wheel Tug is trying to get into here is uh, helping assist get the aircraft in, get it turned quickly, and get it back out again with a minimum amount of time and equipment. Another area in the pandemic arena that it's going to be hard to tell if it's a cost savings at all uh, is going to be the fact that uh, most airlines are running their air conditioning units, their packs, their APUs uh, constantly to provide more airflow through the cabin. Uh, many airlines who fly the 737 actually keep the APU running even when they're doing single-engine taxi just so they can keep the airflow to the passenger side of the aircraft going. Now, I don't want this to sound like a completely negative review. I just think that uh, Wheel Tug has found a really tough time to come back into the sales portion here uh, right in the middle of a pandemic where, you know, the price of fuel is low, operating costs and time are not as big a deal as they have been. Gate constraints, uh, airport space right now is not really an issue either. So it's, uh, it's a pretty neat product. Um, I think it's got issues that need worked out, certainly from the pilot side, uh, from the uh, airport logistics side and everything. You know, if you've got the safe dock installed already and you've got the equipment, it looks like this would be a pretty good way to get aircraft in and turn around quickly. Has a lot of features for VIP aircraft as well that may be popular. My personal favorite pushbacks have nearly always been from the Super Tug series. Uh, just the way they pick the aircraft nose up, push back, and it just seems uh, significantly faster. But of course, there's a cost involved in all of this, ground personnel, etc. And there's only so many ground personnel you can take away because you still have to do something like load the bags on the aircraft, move the gates around, things of that nature. So it'll be interesting to see as time goes on here uh, how Wheel Tug does in the market and what happens as we come out of the pandemic and back into this. And whether or not this ends up being uh, some great idea on a shelf or fully integrated into something we'll see in the future, maybe all the way down to aircraft uh, taxiing nearly all the way to the takeoff point, starting their engines at the end, and then departing. So that's it. Just a quick look at the wheel tug system. Uh, it had a pretty successful operation out at Memphis, and it looks pretty neat. Uh, does some interesting stuff from the aircraft, and we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm.